Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa astaghfiruka liman a'lamu wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ayu al-ahbab may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless us in you and forgive us in you and guide us in you to that which is true. Ayol Ahbab, I wanted to mention a couple of points regarding the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnah and the Minhaj of Imran Hussein. And bi idnillah that this is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's not in effort to belittle brother Imran nor is it in effort to raise me up but it is an obligation to make clear the haq when we know the haq and call out falsehood when we see falsehood especially if it has a wide impact that this is from the minhaj of ahl sunnati wal jama'a and as dalil of that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran that you are the best of nations ukhrijat lin nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhauna anil munkar that you are the best nation and that you that the characteristic of that best nation is that they command the good and forbid the evil and speaking about widespread differences in aqida in creed and methodology in understanding islam is an obligation upon those individuals who have taken up the responsibility to call to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ayul ahbab I think we all can agree that brother Imran when he speaks he makes countless inferences countless logical conclusions based on his understanding and I think we can all agree on that and I have not and I'm being as just as possible I've only listened to no more than 10 to 15 minutes of lectures of Imran Hussein in my whole entire lifetime. So I but in those 15 minutes of two different lectures, just opening up the YouTube, I found countless mistakes and this is one of the biggest ones is how he understands the text. And that's why I want to make clear of how the salaf of this umma, Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and when I mean the salaf, I mean how the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum majma'in, how they understood it. I just listened to just a couple of seconds of Imran Hussein or a few minutes and he was speaking about a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Sahih Muslim and he said, "Now, this is my opinion." And then he made a lot of logical inferences and he said, "I want to train my students to be logical and Uh, question me so afterwards if you have questions come to me after the lecture subhanallah when was this the methodology of the salaf of this umma that we would advance our opinions and our inferences and our speculation and our ta'wil our interpretation of the nusus of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ayul ahbab I want to mention a couple of things here from Usul of Fiqh and this is coming from Alama bin Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala in his book Usul min Ilma Usul Usul min Ilma Usul He said Ta'rif al zahir So Ahl Sunnah just to make this where it's relevant Ahl Sunnah and the sal- the meaning the salaf of this umma that they look at the text of the Quran and the Sunnah the origin of it is that it's haqiqi and it's zahir meaning that it is uh, clear and we accept the ahadith whether it be ahadith or ayats in the verses 
that explain the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we take them, the origin is we take them in their apparent meaning. Unless there's evidence from the Quran and Sunnah to show us otherwise, to further explain that text. So that's the asal, and I'm going to give you the evidence now. So first we look at the term Zahir Lughatan, al wadah wal bayan wal bayan al zahir ayyul ahbab it means uh, that which is apparent and in the arabic language it is explained by the term al wadah wal bayan meaning that which is uh, evident and explicit in its meaning wa istilahan this means as a sharia term whenever we hear the wa istilahan as a sharia term ما دل بنفسه على معنى راجح مع الاحتمال مع الاحتمال غيره أو غيره. So as a Sharia term, it means what in and of itself clarifies the most uh, correct uh, meaning. Let me explain what that means. That means if you have a text. And, and we're actually going to get into an example very soon. The, the, the Sheikh gives an example right here. He says, مثاله قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم توضعوا من لحوم الإبل So here we have a text from the Sharia where the Prophet ﷺ said, Make wudu from the meat of the camel. The Sheikh says, so that the, we won't, to save time, we won't, we'll just translate that the apparent meaning of what is meant by wudu here is washing the four limbs, or washing four limbs in a manner which is consistent with the sharia, with the characteristics of wudu as defined in the sharia. Not in the way of wudu, which is, has the meaning nadafa, meaning cleanliness. So meaning here, that this text here that we have, where the Prophet ﷺ said, تَوَضَّعُوا مِنْ لُحُومَ الْإِبْلِ Where he said, make wudu from luhum al-ibl, from the, the meat of the camel. The zahir, or the apparent meaning, is that, uh, you know, where, where uh, there's a possibility that there, this could mean two different things. The possibility is two, and this is why I said, That means that here there's a possibility that a person could understand the term wudu in two different ways. The first way is the vahir meaning, which means it's the clear and the apparent meaning is that wudu here means that you should make wudu as is defined in the sharia by washing those limbs that are uh, known as the limbs in for making wudu. The other meaning which is possible is also a possibility, but the first meaning is possible and it is the most correct. Whereas the second meaning also is a meaning consistent with the Arabic language. That wudu in its origin, it refers to cleanliness, nawafa. To clean, you know, cleanliness. So since we have those two choices to understand that text, the most correct is to go with the apparent meaning. That the wudu here, and this is what is, is more consistent with the evidences and the most apparent meaning that a person would underst understand. If you said wudu to anyone who's a Muslim, they would understand, oh, that you mean the wudu in which we uh, usually begin by washing our hands and we wash our mouth and our nose and we uh, wash our face and the other parts of the wudu. That's what they would understand. They would not go to the, the meaning that it means just in the Arabic language of nadafa, of cleanliness. So this is what it means to go to the zahir. This is the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. So now we're going to move on to another part which is relevant for our discussion. What is the ruling regarding 
going with the apparent meaning of the text. Because this is Ahl Sunnah. Imran Hussein criticizes Salafis and so forth by saying that they take the literal meaning of these hadith, when in fact we should be explaining as his in his in the context of his understanding uh, regarding the New World Order. Uh, the Dajjal means this. The dollar has a symbol of the Dajjal and it means this. Uh, and, and, and so forth and so on. And the UN is this and etc. So this is Imran Hussein. He has his own ta'wil, his own understanding and misinterpretation. He His understanding in minhaj or methodology for understanding the text of the Sharia, because neither one of us would, would uh, argue about Bukhari and Muslim or those ahadith, whether they're authentic or not. But where we differ is we are trying to refer people to go back to the apparent meaning as it came from the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was revealed from Allah and uh, revealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was revealed from Allah to the Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam and how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pro propagated it and practiced it and how his sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and the tabi'een and the itba'a tabi'een, how they understood it. And that's where we limit ourselves to that. Imran Hussein, however, his way of understanding his methodology is different. And he says that clearly, you'll find this in the first 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes of his lecture on the UN, uh, the Dajjal and the New World Order or something like that. You'll find that in the first 10 to 15 minutes, he says all this. He says, uh, the scholars lack the knowledge of Ilm al-Akhirah. Uh, and he says, the, the Salafis, there are brothers, but they understand things literally. And they're still waiting for the donkey to come and, and all kind of other things that he says, which is actually a belittlement of the scholars and a belittlement of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah and the madhab of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the understanding of how we understand the text. Now let's look, let's get back to the to the question at hand. Al Amal bid Zahir, Wajib, illa bi Dalil, Yasrafu an Zahirihi li anna hadhi li anna hadhi. I've lost uh, the text, but I do have the text with me. لِأَنَّ هَذِهِ لَا يُدِلُّ عَلَى مَعْنَى بِنَفْسِهِ Or, I'm sorry. So this is a very important statement for us, Ayyul Ahbab. The Shaykh then goes to say, he begins to, to speak about what is the ruling with taking the, the text, understanding the Sharia text, the Quran and the Sunnah, by its apparent meaning. You know, what, what is most closely, uh, what is the most correct and uh, literal Meaning, why, why, why should we understand that? Why should we not go with Imran Hussein's uh, way, his tariqah? So the Sheikh says, "An amal bi zahir wajib." He said that taking this way is an obligation that we accept the apparent meaning of the text, except if there is evidence, meaning evidence from uh, the Sharia, which takes that evidence away from its apparent meaning, meaning there's evidence from the text of the Qur'an and Sunnah to show that this text that we're trying to understand from the Qur'an and Sunnah uh, is not literal, or it is not, uh, it has another meaning, a meaning that requires uh, interpretation, a further interpretation, or a more, um, a more uh, majazi interpretation, and majazi meaning, uh, in English, we say that it mean that a, a a a less literal interpretation. Then he said that was the first reason. Is that you know we the first thing is is that we have to accept the text on their apparent meaning. That's an obligation unless there's evidence to show otherwise to show that it is not uh, uh, literal, but that it is. Uh, uh, metaphorical. This is the term I'm looking for. And that it is metaphorical. And then the Sheikh said, 
The first reason is because that is the way of the Salaf, meaning this is how the Sahaba, and there's countless examples of how they understood the text. This is how the Tabi'een, uh, the, the students of the Sahaba, and the Itba'a Tabi'een, those first three generations, this is how they understood the text. They went with a literal interpretation unless there was evidence to show from the Sharia or to show that it was not a text to be taken on its apparent meaning or its literal meaning. So the Prophet ﷺ made clear these things for us. He said, And the second reason he said that we take this literal interpretation or apparent meaning is because it is the safest. Now, Ayyah al-Habab, when we look at Imran Hussein, I was amazed when I listened to the lecture, This I, I listened about 10 minutes of this last lecture, and I was just amazed. I, I hardly found anything about Islam he was talking about. The whole lecture, he went off on how he understood the Hadith and how the Mediterranean Sea, it, this Hadith could not have been the Mediterranean Sea in his belief because it would only take so much time to sail this. And the Hadith said this much hours, so it must have meant uh, that it was referring that they they sailed to the UK. That's what he said. He said they sailed to Britain in his his uh, in his estimation. And then he, you know, it was so off topic and so much based on his inferences, his speculation. An inference, Ayyah al-Habab, in case you don't know the meaning of the term, it means to have like a logical uh, a logical conclusion, meaning that this was the logic of Imran Hussein. This was how he understood the text. But why wouldn't it be more befitting to go to see how the early scholars, there's so many explanations, shurahat of hadith, that you could go to understand these hadith about the Dajjal and these hadith about all these uh, various happenings from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's not necessary. They didn't leave anything for us that we have to worry about being lost. It's there in the text. It's there in the original text. So go back to the original text. And then we don't have to worry about the understanding of Imran Hussein or my understanding or his understanding or Sheikh so-and-so's understanding. But in fact, if we go back to the classical scholars and the classical interpretation, we'll be safe and do not go beyond that. Because then that will protect us from bid'ah and zandaka, dis, uh, you know, and, and heresy and all these things that we can easily fall to and easily fall uh, go astray if we do not understand the text of the Sharia properly and we each have a different intellect and none of us would disagree about that and all of our understandings will be uh, different. So the Shaykh said the first reason, again, is because this was the way of the Salaf. The second reason is because it's the safest. The third reason, he said, abra that this is the, the uh, safest way to free a person from the responsibility of ibadah. Meaning that, for example, if you... Uh, you know, we're all, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, waqimu salat. He orders us to make salat. This is an al-amr yufid al-wujub. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands something, the asl or the origin of that command is that it shows that this is an obligation to do this. So, abra li in this situation, if we follow the, the, the literal meaning of this text without trying to find a new interpretation or maybe salat means this maybe salat means uh meditation maybe salat means do yoga like the the buddha uh the the people who do yoga or what have you that we don't try to change the meaning of what the text means then we will free ourselves from the responsibility of having to perform that prayer because the law commanded us so it means it's a responsibility so now we have freed ourselves by understanding the text in the way Allah wanted it to be understand, understood, and we freed ourselves from the responsibility of that act of ibadah by fulfilling that act of ibadah and understanding it in its literal uh, context in the way it was meant to be understood in accordance with Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Sheikh mentioned the uh, fourth way, fourth reason. He said, "Wa aqwa fi ta'abud wal inqiyad," and he said, "And this is the strongest." Uh, the strongest, uh, by understanding the text literally, it is the strongest way uh, to perform worship and to be obedient to the commands of Allah. So, for example, if, and what does this mean for us? So, for example, if you take the, the way of those people who, mis who interpret things according to their intellect and according to their inferences and according to their speculation, then 
when you're commanded with something in the Sharia, then perhaps your understanding of what that means will lead you to something which is totally against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted you to do. So then you will not complete that act of ibadah, you know. But if you understand it by its literal mean, literal meaning, going back to the example of Wa'aqimu uh, Salat, uh, performing the prayer, Wa'atu Zakat, and 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 pray, uh, do and performing sadaqah or chair uh, the alms tax, paying the alms tax. By following the apparent meaning, this is the strongest for you to fulfill your ibadah. But you will not fulfill your ibadah if you misinterpret. You say, well, zakat also means in the Arabic language, it means this. It means to, uh, you know, a purification, which can mean a purification of my nafs, purification of my heart. So paying zakat for me means I will purify my heart. And that's sufficient instead of giving from my wealth. So this would be if a person restricted themselves. This is an example just to give you to, to understand it in the most simplest terms. We hope no one would go to that uh, level of misguidance. But this is just to give you an, uh, a concept of what I'm taking because these are fairly complex uh, issues in, uh, in, in trying to understand uh, Asul al fiqh and what we're discussing. Ayul Ahbab, with regards to this, Sheikh Saad... Uh, Sheikh Saad ibn Nasir ibn Abd al-Aziz al-Shatri, half of Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned some very important things in explaining this uh, about what Ben Uthameen was saying, which is also rele relevant for us. He said, uh, what's, what's the uh, ruling with regards to following the apparent meaning? He said it's an obligation to, uh, to uh, fulfill uh, or to accept the apparent meaning the apparent meaning which is uh, in accordance with the most correct uh, meaning or interpretation. And it is not permissible to leave the meaning of, of a statement in the, in the Sharia, uh, which it, in its apparent meaning, to accept another meaning of that text, which you know to be the weaker in meaning, meaning that it is the, the least uh, correct. So you cannot take, you cannot accept the an inaccurate meaning of the text in Sharia over the most correct meaning. He said, and that is impermissible, uh, and unless you have evidence, as we mentioned before, as the Sheikh mentioned before, which shows you that the text in its meaning goes from uh, being apparent to uh, a to from a literal uh, meaning to maybe perhaps a metaphorical meaning or a meaning uh, another meaning. So there has to be evidence to take the text from that to that. And he said, and if you find evidence, which is evidence for showing this, and this is called tatwil. So this is when. Ta'wil, the ta'wil, of course, that's permissible, that you have evidence for it, not just according to your intellect and your speculation and so forth, as Brother Imran has taken, has been quite liberal in interpreting the text of the Dajjal and, and many ahadith and so forth. Then the Sheikh said that this is the last point I want to mention. He said, Wadalil al wujub amal fi lav of zahir bi ma'ana al rajih. أن هذا هو أسلوب العرب وطريقتهم في فهم ظواهر الفاظ والقرآن والسنة نزل نزلا بلغة العرب فإن أراد فهم القرآن والسنة نفهم نفهمهما أو نفهما نفهما على طريقة العرب ومن ذلك الفاظ الظاهرة. So this is very important point. The last point I want to mention. And this is where it also illustrates for us the difference between Ahl Sunnah and Imran Hussein and those people who follow that methodology of trying to understand in the text in the Sharia. He said in the, the evidence to show that it is an obligation to, uh, to operate or to understand the text by its uh, apparent meaning with the, uh, its apparent 
and most correct meaning is that this is the asloob of the Arab. First and foremost, it is the way of the Arabs. Why is this important? The Sheikh is going to mention. And the, it's their uh, methodology. So it was the way, the asloob of the Arabs in their, in their language. And it is the, their methodology. Is that they understood the apparent meaning of alfav, uh, you know, of, of linguistic terms. And then he says, and this is why it's very important for us, And he said, and the Qur'an and the Sunnah both were revealed in the Arabic language. So that's why we take the tariqat al-Arab, that we go with the apparent meaning. This is how the Arabs understood it. This is how the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anhum ajma'in, understood it. This is how the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, conveyed it, alayhi salatu wa So the Qur'an and the Sunnah were revealed in the Arabic language. So if a person wants to understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah, then we understand them by the way of the Arab, the Arab Arabic language, by their methodology. And that is, min dhalika al zahira. And from that is the apparent meaning of the text. And so this is why it's important, ayul ahbab, that I hope that this can be some enlightenment. And I know those people who love Imran Hussein and love him uh, regardless of what he says and what he propagates, they're going to continue to love him and listen to him. All I can do is convey the message, and if Allah accepts it, then this is what's important. Anything that I said was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a source of guidance for us all. And may Allah forgive us and forgive our brothers and sisters in Islam. Guide us and guide our brothers and sisters in Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide Imran Hussein away from misguiding the youth with these political science lectures. Because if we want to go, we can go back to the universities and get uh, and, and, and make those and make use of his lectures. But as far as those being a way to learn your, your religion and how to come closer to Allah then we don't see the benefit in speculation, in inferences, and in new interpretations. وَكُلُّ بِدَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ وَأَهْلِهَا فِي النَّارِ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمْ عَلَى نَبِيَّنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى عَلَيْهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَل